Hello everyone and welcome to League of Europe F123 Division 3 here uh, around 11 of this season and we're here for the French Grand Prix of Paul Ricard uh, my name is QVR Stapp and I'll be taking you through this and we're here uh, for 16 drivers so a little bit less than usual but it should still should be you know a pretty exciting race hopefully so I'll be pulling up the standings quickly so we do have a bit more of a, a shake up or a bit of a set standings now and uh, Cam K is still leading the way after his another win uh, and sprint victory as well last week out he's extended this lead to 50 points over MCR now it looks on course to do a good job to try and win this championship so he's not done yet as MCR uh, is still consistently scoring and making sure he gets somewhere near but he hasn't been as high up at all times um, leaving Ryan B in third place though on 162, whereas Cam K are on 253 and MCR on 203. In terms of points, uh, Ryan isn't here tonight though. Equals Matt's also not here tonight on 144 points. Then it's Bosnia on 135 and Steven on 134 who are here tonight, so they can make quite a big of a, of a leap. Maybe even up into third position if they can get a race win in. Then it's Crack in 7th on 91 points, Heinewark in 8th on 88, then Mr. Wouter on 87 in P9, with James Heads in 10th position, running that out uh, with 77 points. There's like France, Paul Ricard not on the calendar in real life anymore, but it's definitely still often, especially in league racing, an exciting track to watch. Um, As you see, 16 drivers out here. Let's see if we uh, potentially get some rain as well. Got that in Division 1. I'm not too sure about Division 2. And uh, yeah, hopefully we, ha we have some excitement here today. Obviously a bit of a chance with the lesser attendance for other people to try and make a bit of a leap in the standings. Get a good result then, potentially. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people will be looking to that. 15 corners. Around this, I think, 5.8 kilometer long track. And obviously, used often as a test track as well. You can see the, the different layouts. I think it's around 160, 170 different potential layouts you can actually make of this track. But we'll be using just the one today, luckily. Makes it a bit less confusing as well. So the first car out on track is Swip here today. Uh, our division organizer, lobby host. Currently P14 in the standings. With uh, a best result of ninth position in both Baku and Belgium last week. He just consistently gets a few points in every week. And gets himself ahead of uh, a fair few people who tend to DNF. So, he's done quite decently on that, and I reckon this will be a time he'll be hoping for maybe even a better result today. But let's see how the, the Dutchman is going to navigate that. Just a quick look at the Constructors as well, as uh, Red Bull obviously with Cam K and Ryan have done ex excellently as that. Um, we're there on 415 points over McLaren, who are second with 294. Alpine is inferred in 278. Obviously, there's a. I think there's a full on chance they close it out here today. But they can take a decent leap. Obviously, Ryan not here tonight, so that isn't going to help. But again, very close to the Constructors win. Let's uh, go on board with Swip. So you head down in towards turn one, fifth gear. Hold on through towards turn two. Make sure you use off the track there. And I'm heading down towards turn three, quick right into the left of turn four. Make sure you don't the battle there. A lot of track taken up there by the Haas, and that's quite good to see. 
Let's see, it's the first turn five, and now six. Very long right hander, easy to spin out on traction, the king of seven, and onto the missile straight. Where the DRS is enabled for the second time after the start finish straight. And down in towards the chicane. Absolutely implemented to get some overtaking opportunities. And the exit of this is going to be very important. I think Twip did prioritize entry a little bit much there. But we could potentially still see a decent time. 50.8 isn't too bad just yet. Through the flat out turn 10. 310 kilometers an hour heading down into the long right of turn 11. Fifth gear, hold it through a little bit. Squidgy on the exit there, taking a very tight line actually for turn 12 there. But hold it tight now for flat out for 13. Into the penultimate corner. Complex is a very difficult one because you want to line it up here all the way to the left and then turn in for the final corner. Get that exit right. DRS open. We're gonna see what this lap has brung the Haas driver. I want 30.8 is what it will be for now. So I'll be adjusting my audio quickly. I see in the meantime, Energetic has put it two tens ahead of his fellow Dutchman in P1 right now, 30.6. Solid time, we'll see how other people will compare to that. Harry Newark, his teammate. Coming up towards the line as well. I showed some good quality pace recently. Let's see, and a 30.3. Let's see if the far that gets him, but that's professionally pole position. Two Mercs, we've seen uh, James had just up front. Sway Ross as well, Sway Ross. 29.2, very, very good lap there by the Swedish driver. Uh, let's see if James can match it. It's a 30.3, not quite, but <laughs> that's an excellent lap from Sway Ross. 29.2 is very, very quick crack on the mediums by the way let's put it ahead of james uh 30 flat on mediums has a very good lap i'm not sure why you'd go on mediums in these kind of conditions but he's on it should be a bit more potential on that as well then so that'll be exciting to watch bosnia looking at towards the end of his lap but 41.9 is obviously not the quickest time. I think he's trying to go again. Axel puts it in P4, 30.3. 5,000 behind James. And just half a tenth ahead of his fellow countrymen in P5. Let's uh, have a look at Sierra Killer, who does have a quality ba ban. And uh, he is uh, come back into the pits to probably retire in the pits, which you'd hope to see. Uh, just crawling around, both Alfa Romeo still on the lap, but Ibo is validated. So he's not on the quick one here. Look at uh, Steban, who's also invalidated. Mr. Perro doesn't look like he's on a quick one. He's just waiting it out for now. Let's uh, have a look at Bosnia then. I think uh, that's the right one to do. And he is uh, six seconds up on this time. I recall correctly, but eight tens ahead of Swift coming through that. So this should be a pretty good lap for the Williams driver. Very aggressive into turn 11. Hold in fifth gear all the way through there. Down into four, third gear even. Back for quickly shifting back up to four. Big overtime moment there on the exit of turn 12. Makes it a very difficult corner. With different lines you can take. And another. Big snap there into the last corner and on the exit of the final. I think he'll want to improve that final sector towards the end of the session. But for now, 30.2 is going to put in P3. But a lot of time is still in there uh, to be proven, I think. As uh, Mr. Burroughs just started a lap, I think. And the Alpha Tower is actually just coming back into the pits, actually. Um... As well, Steven is obviously a track where he can invalidate quite easily. If you look at Ibo potentially as well. Uh, not on the quickest of laps, but... And just uh, looking around, Energetics I think... Still driving around with a little bit more fuel potentially. I suggest he has some more time in the bank as well. Let's look at Mr. Puro then. So he heads through turn 8, 9, and now 9, I think, that is actually. Um, someone else shooting up the time sheets? Nope, but my I think there was just Ibo going on the 34.3.
He's going board with his teammates. So he heads down into turn 11. Down to 5th gear. Let's see if he can take turn 12 decently. 4th gear all the way through here. Looks pretty alright. Probably not the best of seasons for him. It started off uh, last season, I recall, that he was pretty much near the top of D4, but recently he's not really been as good for him, but maybe this is another opportunity for him to show him what was made off and a 30.8. He's gonna get himself in the mix at least. And P9 currently. Mr. Wouter just behind starting a lap. Flying into his missed a couple races here and there. But when he's here he's usually one of the quicker drivers out here. So he heads down into turn three, a lot of commitment there. As well as into turn four and five, down to the second gear. Accelerate that properly. 22 1 says it's purple. It's a pretty decent sector. As much as I know of. At least Ray Ross will probably have had a good sector there as well. So, but it was actually purple. Not too sure. Here comes the Alpha Terry down towards the chicane. 332 3 comes an hour. I see it. For the chicane, turn 9 exit very important. But looks pretty solid so far for the Alpha Terry. 49.8 is definitely proving that. That's a couple tens ahead of Bosnia, who didn't have the grace of fine sector, so this could be a P2 lap for the time being for the Dutchman. Unless he's finding a lot of time in the final sector. Fifth gear through there. Holds it quite nicely. Taking a very wide entry, but it's working out for him. Fourth gear on the exit as well. This is looking like a very good lap here, I think, for Mr. Wouter. Down to fifth. And you want to get out to third, second even for that little hairpin there. The air is open, and we'll see what this time is going to be for the Alpha Tower. A 29.5 is a very solid lap there, puts it into P2, and uh, puts himself at least in contention for pole position potentially. He's going to have to find a few more tents, uh, as obviously Sveiros' lap was very good. He was on another lap, but he has uh, made a mistake. And. We'll have to try again, maybe, at the end of the session. Let's have a look at Stiban Den. Also just starting a lap coming through turn 1 and 2. There's a few more drivers actually on laps. Uh, so Swip is just coming towards the 2 split. He's about 4.5 tenths up. James is also coming towards that point. And he himself is about a tenth down actually, so he's not on an improvement right now. Makes sense to keep an eye on Swift at least then. Bring himself maybe even towards the top five right now, if his last sector is decent enough. Third gear coming through there. He's not using all of the track, but it looks like a pretty solid exit there for the Haas driver. That's into turn 14. Down into second gear, missing the apex a little bit. Bit of oversee on the exit as well. Trying to correct the car. But across the line, Swip goes. And it's going to be a 30.6. He lost some time in the last sector, I think. But overall, not too bad of a lap. James has come back in. Let's look at Steven's doing 49.7 split time there. That is going to put him at least in the top three, I think. Now let's see if his last sector is good enough to prove that to be true. For the time being, at least fourth gear for him. And uh Open up the corner nicely, taking a bit much over the curb potentially on the inside. But we're going to see if it's cost him a lot. He crossed the line at 29.5 as well. And just ahead of Mr. Wouter there. MCR also on a solid lap, roughly the same split time as Steban in Sector 2. And across the line, he just about goes behind him. Just about half a tenth behind, not too bad. Uh, we know from MCR that he's Cable finding a lot of time. Cam K on a 50.1. Not as quick. Could put himself maybe more amongst P5, I think, right now. So obviously other drivers cracks just starting a lap. As well as I think Heinemark is on the lap here behind as well. So let's keep an eye on out on all that. Cam K across the line at 29.8. Indeed P5 for the Red Bull driver. Not quite up there, but Enough up there that he's going to put himself in a good position. Heinemark decided to not finish the lap. Uh, seemingly invalidating. And uh, we're looking at IRT crack here. Obviously, had set his time on the mediums. Now on the softs. 
Let's see if he can improve a lot. He was two and a half tenths up in sector one. See, yeah, using the gears quite a lot there. Down to second gear, even for coming for turn nine. Turn and rotate the car. And we've seen four tenths up in this sector two split. Let's go on board with the McLaren as he heads down towards turn 11 here. Very difficult corner can be. Aggressive downshifting. And back up, the traction looks solid there for the McLaren Rover. Third gear, a little bit much of the curb maybe, but took enough speed that it probably is fine. It's looking like a very solid lap. All the way down in third gear. Second even for the exit of the final corner. Across the line, the uh, is on a blue bit. Can slow that your car down a little bit, but across the line at 29.3, but some just shy of Sway Ross's time set at the start at the session. Both on the lap in behind as well. Didn't see split time, so let's see if it's the last sector at least is going to be better. Using a lot of the track here on the exit to make sure he doesn't invalidate. Fourth gear heading for here. Just keep it steady and tidy. Third gear there. Looks alright. Let's uh, see if we can find an improvement for the NSX driver. Across the line, 29.5. And need an improvement in between Steven and MCR and P4 for the Williams. Uh, whether he's going to have enough time to do another lap, I don't think so. The fuel is running out. And the time is also running out with three and a half minutes remaining in this session. So I think for Bosnia Crack, that's going to be it. Crack might just about be able to do another lap. You have to be quick though and uh, hope he doesn't get influenced by MCR here. He's, uh, he's, he's definitely trying to get back to the pits as quickly as he can. So many drivers so just waiting for this last moment to prepare for the final laps. Try and find that little bit of extra time. I'm going to see if they can get it out of there in any way. A few drivers have already made their way onto the track. I'm mostly just the Mercedes drivers for now. James the furthest along. Let's get a little bit maybe of clear space. But at the same time, I don't know if he's going to get that with everyone coming out of the pits now. But we'll have to see. See, it heads just coming out of the final corner right about. Now open it up the maximum he can. And then plant it down on the throttle. See if it's going to go. you got to be careful with the cars coming out of the pits. The Alpine, for example, here. But I think he'll be fine just with that. Open up turn one. Heading. Flying in, actually. Fifth gear holding it down. It's looking quite decently done there for the Mercedes. He currently P8 on a 30.3. He's got quite a bit of time to find what he wants to make sure to get more positions. But let's see if he can find that. Two and a half tenths in sector one is a good start. And accelerating through the gears up into seventh, heading onto the straight. The DRS open once again. Let's see. Usually someone that tends to run somewhat a low of a lower downforce, high turn line speed. This time not. Seems pretty normal. Fourth gear, then the third. And accelerating back out of it there for the Mercedes. Let's see if we can find more time in sector two. Cross that split four tenths up this time. Find a little bit more. He can get himself ahead of Cam K at least. Well, let's see how sector three is for that. I think down into turn 11. Very neatly done there. Accelerating out of it. This track provides quite a bit of grip here normally. Fourth gear on the exit here as well. It looks like a very solid lap here from James. Let's see if he can get himself higher up in the 29s at least. Second gear down into the final corner. And across the line. Let's see what it is going to be for James. Head 14. Across the line. 29.6 is going to put him P7. Actually getting himself pretty close to the pack. Not quite on it. Let's so see uh, Sway Ross as well. The next one on the lap. 81 thousands up in sector 1. Is he going to be able to get himself maybe even into the 28s? We'll have to wait and see if everyone else is just turning the laps. Sector 3 looks pretty busy. I'm going to make sure you don't... You're not in the way of anyone else. Let's see if Sveiros find more, t find more time. No, he's actually lost some time in Sector 2. Tenth and a half down on his 
PB, current pole position time. So we're going to have to see if um, you can find some back in the last sector, or that's going to be it. The flag is out now, I think. It might have been MCR that was too late. I'm just going to switch on to that. Yeah, MCR looks like it was too late, as well as Energetics and Axel just not making the line in time. You can prevent that by just going out earlier. We see some good split times here and there, but we're going to look at Swyros if he's found any more time coming across the line. He's not done that, and he's uh, just crashed there beyond the line, which uh, obviously then doesn't cause an issue. Harry work. Four tens up, coming for sector two. If you find more time in the last sector, 29.7 puts him B8. Solid time for the Greek driver there. James is also done. Just crossing the line once again. Steban, someone I'm very curious about, but he is not going to improve. He's not on his ERS and hasn't used any. So that's uh, going to be that. It was about a second up. Look at that, Mr. Wout to potentially use three tens up. Kamke just in behind as well, so those two are going to be interesting to keep an eye out on. Kamke two tenths up as well. Looks like a crack could be another contender here as well, but the last three cars on track there are not going to be of any use there. Mr. Wouter going to come across the line. Let's see, can he put it onto pole position? The Alpha Tauri across the line, 28.9. What a lap there from Mr. Wouter. Kamke does improve, goes to P7 only though. And a crack has pulled into the pit, so that's uh, going to be that for him. But Mr. Wouter, at the death of the session, put in a fantastic lap to be the only driver to go into the 28s. Barely, but he's done it. That's a, a really good lap there for the Alpha Tauri. And uh, he'll be starting from pole position alongside Sway Ross. Gonna run you through the grid here. It's Mr. Wouter putting out pole position ahead of Sway Ross and P2, then Crack and Steven on the second row. Bosnia, MCR, then Cam K and James. It's gonna be exciting to see those two uh, in sixth and seventh close together. Uh, then the an old Greek fifth row with Harry just ahead of Axel and it's Energetics and Swip with Mr. Burrow and Ebo to Alfa Romeos and then Zero Killer and a Flip not setting a lap this session and starting in last position in 16th only so the attendance is quite spare at this point in time let's see what this race is going to bring and I uh, have seen that there is some suggestion of a rain and uh, we do see that out of track right now uh, looks like it should be wet tires. Uh, I'm seeing dry tires in the pit box, so that is what is kind of confusing me. But we'll have to see. Obviously, two stops still applies there. We're going to have to see uh, how these drivers are going to navigate these conditions. Obviously, they've got the formation have to get used to it. But it's not going to be the easiest thing to do. It's a normal dry conditions. would often opt for double mediums and another tire. Soft medium, medium, hard medium, medium, and one of those. But of course, with the rain, that's uh, all going to be out the window. <laughs> You're going to just have to see how long this rain lasts, if it lasts the entire race, if it's just for a split second, before it goes back to dry conditions. So that's all going to factor into what these drivers are going to be opting for. It does look intermediate, not full width. We're just waiting for everyone to load in properly. So there we go, formation lap. We're starting, and uh, I think unsurprisingly we'll see Everyone, I'd imagine on Intus, but it looks like they're all on dry tires. Has the game mandated dry tires in this case? Which could make it extremely interesting. Obviously, in the game, you cannot pit on the formation lap, which I think some drivers might want to do, <laughs> looking at this. But I reckon we'll see some lap 1 pit stops, potentially. 
But yeah, uh, softs and mediums it is for everyone. Uh, Mr. Wouter, first softs, crack, Steban in third and fourth, MCR and Cam K on sixth and seventh, and Axel Energetic Swip, Mr. Pro in ten through to thirteenth, all on softs. Everyone else I haven't mentioned is on a set of mediums, uh, who are gonna struggle a little bit more to get the tires up to temperature. Obviously, if you don't know how to do that properly, then uh, it's gonna be even more difficult. But this uh, does pro throw a spanner up in the works. And let's see, especially if you've not saved any soft sets, you're gonna be in used softs here. That's also not gonna be fun. So all runs, this uh this could be a very chaotic opening lap here. With uh potentially a few pit stops to enters. Because these do look like intermediate conditions, I cannot lie. The dry tires are still better. I mean I'd be very surprised. So we do see some spray coming off the tires here and there. And it does... The, the road just looks severely... Like... Wet. Like this doesn't scream to me it's on the crossover period either. So I'm, I'm pretty surprised. I was already surprised when I saw... Those lying in the pit box. Seemingly slick tires. Let's uh, just go on board with Mr. Wouter here. It could be that the rain just... It's about to stop as well. Then it's obviously become more and more interesting. But it does look like it's, it's definitely intermediate. At least to be preferred, I'd imagine. But the drivers don't seem to have a choice, so uh, let's get this on the way. Let's so the drivers just line up towards the grid. And we're gonna hopefully get a somewhat clean start, but I imagine that's going to be pretty difficult in these conditions. So 16 will be lining up towards the back of the grid now as well. Just waiting on Flip to be the last car to set his car in this grid box. So we should get on the way very shortly. There we go. As I can't see the quite lights, I can hear them I think, potentially. Lights out and away we go, and it looks like Mr. White has a great start there off the line. RT Crack trying to get alongside Sway Ross already. Looks like Steven's actually the one who's had a great start, but it's kind of boxed in there in P4. But Mr. White retains the lead, Sway Ross sitting it around the outside, not quite has the grip to do that, and it's going to be vulnerable to RT Crack now going around him. MCR and Steven looking at his as well. More yellow flags as James is uh, down in P16 now. Something must have happened to him early on. So you see almost free white action up front here. So he's very well crack. Mr. Wouter right going deep there. And it's going to allow crack to get the lead here on lap one. Even in sector one still. Just coming into sector two. So I imagine we're going to see the pits fall. And if you're the second driver of your team, you want to get ahead of the first. I was seeing MCR is passing Sway Ross to try and do that, but is it going to be enough to catch crack here? So otherwise the double stack could be costly for the McLaren. Cam Kane, on the other hand has dropped down a couple positions, down to P9. He mainly struggling a little bit with these conditions. Flip has had a great start. He's already up into P10 here as he passes Energetics. So good start for the Williams. I think he'll be happy with that. Just looking at the front. It's so seemingly the better tire right now. But how many drivers are going to just opt to go into the pits? How, who's going to opt to stay out and think, hmm, maybe it's not so bad? We'll have to see. Just look at the race leader. Crack, he is staying out. It might not be that bad then, because it does genuinely look wet. But if the grip isn't awful... As far as no one has gone into the pits. I'm seeing this right. This does look fairly right. The grip doesn't seem awful, awful, but... You'd imagine this is intermediate conditions, unless it's about to dry up. And it's not that bad right now. This is severely confusing. I cannot lie. Because... <laughs> 
This looks so king wet. I guess the grip is not that bad. It doesn't look awful. The drivers aren't skidding off the track at every single corner. So I'd imagine the grip is then not horrendous, but. Guess go figure. So I do say that the higher work does go straight on there at the chicane. Hopefully avoiding a penalty for himself. I doubt it. Yeah, that's a 10 second penalty. That. Could probably be resolved to an extent. He does cut something, but 10 seconds is uh, a bit of overkill, I think. So, uh, if that doesn't get served, it says Kamke as well, struggling there, following Axel around, coming through turn 11. Yeah, this doesn't seem like the most fun condition to drive in. I was kind of enjoyed when it's like this, but it seems so over the top. No one opting for the Inters on this lap either? It must be drying up then shortly because... I'd at least imagine someone would take the gamble to just... do something different, but... It looks like everyone's just staying out on the dry tires. The uh, RT Crack seems happy enough without it seems Sway Ross and an MCR near the game side by side into turn 1 and 2. MCR keeping the position there. So uh, Mr. Perros picked up a three second time penalty there as well. Steven as well there coming through to a three already. Obviously the track is already pretty difficult to stay clean on in terms of track limits. Um, yeah, especially with these sort of conditions it's going to be even dip more difficult at times. You don't quite know what you can expect. Harry Newark is looking for a move, but backs out of it into the chicane. Bosnia had a bit of a struggle there. Go a bit further back, seeing uh, Ibo actually spinning from through turn 7. But Swip, James, Energetics, they're all fighting each other, coming through turn 9 here now. James wants to get on the move here. Not quite using his battery though, so he's, he's waiting it out, weirdly. Imagine he goes for a move somewhere, but the, the line just isn't there for him. He's gonna have to wait it out, I guess. Maybe do it somewhere in Sector 3. Keep on board with the Mercedes here for now. He's trying to set it up, but it, it's just not quite coming off in the right spots where he wants it to. Maybe spot the outside here down towards the hairpin. Just put it alongside. Solid and clean as well. Uh, it looks like he's got that one done. In the meantime, Swayros has made a move for P3 out of MCR, but does go deep into turn one. MCR might want to fight back here. Swayros uh, have not seemingly completed quite easily. Kind of work. Also very close in the back of Bosnia right now. Just uh, skipping across the turn three a little bit there. As uh, Axel is putting his nose up the inside. Of the Ferrari there, that was a bit too risky, I think. It's gonna allow Kamke through an axle. Hernan Works lost some time here as well. So Kamke might benefit off the DRS. The DRS is still enabled. So it might just stay like this for a little bit. Kamke opted for the inside there. As uh, up, he gets thrown into P7. Meantime, Bosnia has got thrown Steban in P5 now. Let's see if he's a uh, Got the pace down to try and catch the top four. We've uh, got a little bit of a gap. There's some gaps between them as well. 1.7 between Crack and Mr. Wouter. And 1.6 between Mr. Wouter and Swayros. But then it's uh, about two and a half seconds between MCR and Bosnia. Between P4 and 5. Obviously top 15 score points. So currently if you uh, are ahead of Ibo, you're doing a pretty good job. Who isn't is seemingly Flip and Energetics who's spun at the same point seemingly this uh, signifies their seasons both as it has dried up now so it is the right decision Bosnia has now opted for the pits interestingly enough uh, yeah the the Dutch <laughs> spinning at the same point is quite um, ironic given the seasons James now with the fastest lap and you're seeing that the track is drying up Mr. Wouter seems to be losing a lot of time here 
Now got Sway Ross and MCR all over him in the back. Axel picking up a penalty as well as a lot of drivers are seemingly struggling with that. Bosnia has at this point pitted for heart. That must be a strategy call at this point, but it's very early to do that on lap 4, especially when you started on mediums. We'll have to see. Meantime, Sway Ross is now spending a chance, gets past Mr. Wouter quite easily. And into P2 he goes. Mr. Wouter's gonna have to wait. Cam K is getting through on Steve. And Cam K just. I think half committed there. I caught onto that late, but. That's a rare mistake by the Red Bull, if it is one. And he's have to, gonna have to rejoin in P10. That looked like he was just a little bit too shallow into the corner and therefore just tapped the rear end of Steve and spun him around. Um, from the best I could see anyway. But he's going to be down at P10. And uh, he's going to have some recovery drive to do. Not the best of days for the American here today. Obviously he's had a fantastic season so far but you know what? Everyone has an off day. Steve has decided to opt for the pits here. Uh, he seemed to be struggling quite a bit here, so I'm not too surprised. Crack, fastest lap of the race, 38 flat, but that's immediately disputed by Sway Ross, 37.6. Who seems to be doing a very good job on the mediums right now. Steeman, at the same time, has pitted for mediums. Let's see where he's going to come out compared to Bosnia. Obviously, they were fairly close together. Bosnia pitting for hearts in this kind of conditions, improving conditions has kind of surprising to me. Yeah, still come out ahead of Steban, but I reckon Steban on those mediums is going to have a good chance to catch him for hot tires and all. Meantime, MCR is opting for a move on the inside here after Chicane, next to Mr. Wouter. And that's going to be completed by breaking quite late. Is Mr. Wouter opting for the exit here. Seems he's got a better exit, but is he willing to make a move here? It's going to be the question then towards turn 10. A little slip stream down here. I think he's lifting off just that slight bit to not hit the back of the Spaniard. And uh, just wait it out for now. And obviously if MCR is seeing this and he knows one of their ripples, they're, not, they're a bit further down at the grid. He's going to have a chance to gain some good points here today. He's going to be extra eager to try and finish as high up as he can. Obviously, we're only in left six. A lot has happened, so we see a 35-4 for RIT crack. As far as this time, not improving on that. In the meantime, Mr. Pro has uh, passed Swift because Swift has gone into the pits. So Axel is back past Harry Wark, coming into P5 there. I'm going to see Swift Pits potentially onto the set of mediums, I'd imagine. Now that's also hard for the Haas driver. Interesting choice. Bosnia does set the fastest lap of the race on Haas. But Steven has just passed him. Obviously, coming just out of the pits, he's not going to get that fastest lap of the race just yet. He's going to be aiming for this lap. I think Steven is just trying to undercut to get in range of uh, the top guys here. And the Jetix there as well, showing... There, the track keeps improving. 33-8 there for the Ferrari. Now look how quickly Steven has already dropped Bosnia. Three second penalty won't help him today here, but he looks to be on point. MCR closing up right to the back of Sway Ross. To the inside goes the Spaniard. Got a half committed. Backed out of it. Perhaps the smartest move. The Heinemark as well on the back of Axel. James is now caught up to this as well. James might uh, be the quickest one out of these guys. So he's trying to make it work around the outside of Heinemark. He seems to be lagging a little bit, at least on my end. Um, so Mr. Wouter has now opted for the pits. First of the top guys. And I imagine he's going to put it on the set of mediums, given how long he's taken the softs. But it could be a set of hearts, we'll have to see. I uh, think we see a yellow wall tire there for Mr. Wouter. Let's see where he's going to come out. The scam case got past his reserve teammate. For the time being, serial killer into P7, Mr. Wouter. Compared to Steban, look at that. Steban with a 32.9 fastest lap as well. 
has jumped Mr. Router, and Bosnia has jumped Mr. Router as well. Which is going to be a fresh tires. The Zendikata might have been a really good play there for Steban at least. And I think for Bosnia, maybe the wrong tire, but it has seemed to work. MCR in the meantime has made it a McLaren 1-2 on track. By passing Swayros down the missile straight. And he's going to have to be careful though, because Swayros is back on the back of the McLaren. Using a lot of slipstream. He's lifting off, not wanting to get past too quickly. Looks like MCR might be the quickest one out of them too right now. Harnwark and Axel still going at it down towards turn 10. Ferrari this time ahead. James might want to get involved. Side by side with Axel this time out. Axel running himself off track and therefore conceding the position to the Mercedes. And James is in P5 at this point. They reminded that it is still a two stop. Um, so he's chosen the drivers making a first stop as well as MCR is now. Getting off the stops after eight laps. Crack going on for a very long time. As Axel has sped into the pit lane and got a five second for that. That's not ideal. He's going to have to serve that. Cam K also into the pits. As well as Mr. Perro. So busy pit lane this lap. MCR to medium. So I imagine everyone else here is going to be as well. We have to see. So we see a front wing change there for the Greek as well, potentially having some damage. Camcake's going to another set of softs, trying to be different. That might be the wisest choice, we'll have to see. So MCR coming out of the pits just behind Mr. Wouter, who has passed Bosnia so far already, but MCR wants to make this a fight down towards turn three. Let's see who's going to get out on top here. Bit of contact there, but not too heavy. Looks like Mr. Wouter is out ahead. MCR is going to have to try it on the straight. He's going to be close enough, I think. Although the tires are cold. So he's losing some time through turn 6 there. 5 cents behind at this point. Is it going to be enough to try and overtake the Alpha Tari down towards turn 8? Does he opt to stay behind? Goes for the move. Inside. Is he going to get that one completed? Looks like it. A bit forceful. But looks like he's got that one done into P7 he goes. James in the meantime. Trying to get moved down on Harry Newark. Not quite pulling it off so far. In the meantime, Steban has erased his penalty by uh, driving a very good pace. He's only going to be losing out to Crack, I think, eventually. Mr. Wouter is still in the back. Oh, it looked like he hit the back of him there, potentially. And now down to P8. Crack in the pits. Now that's an interesting one. With a set of medium circular as well, speeding in the pit lane. We're going to see where Crack comes out in comparison to Steban. I think Steban might be ahead on track here. So here he comes. I think Crack. It's going to be very close, actually. Steban just coming out ahead, but Crack still in a very good position here, obviously, without a track limit penalty. I have fresher tires, much fresher tires on Steban at this point. Good move, potentially. Seracola also opting for a soft set. They're using the soft at least twice. Having to go into another tire. Seeing uh, James now going for a move on Harnwark. Pretty easily done there. Then towards turn 8. And uh, making a Mercedes 1 2 on track at this point. Let's see, that's uh, going to unfold. With a uh, crack making a move for the Natalie's here on track as well. Steban wanting to fight it despite his penalty. And running crack off track a little bit there. Has to be said, Crack seems to want to retaliate here. Getting back up the inside. Using his ERS. Trying to get through. Steven is not going to be able to hold that. And uh, opts to sit behind here. They have lost some time there for the battling. About a second. Might have not been the product most productive thing for Steven to do at least. Alright, uh, Mark. Passing James Chat has said him. Say this. Is going to go into the pits now as well. One of the first of the medium runners. And we're going to see another set of mediums put on for James. So that could potentially be a medium, medium soft, I'd imagine. And a quick dash at the end. We'll have to see. After his early first lap, I don't know if there was an incident, but he has uh, dropped to the back. Might be a chance for him uh, to. Get back up the grid. Cam K has got a hit, but he's still in a solid position. Fresh tires. He's got 
a little bit to chase down now. Meantime, MCR, Mr. Rauter, they're all catching Steban. So he is not quite on the pace at this point. Is Bosnia with the hearts. And I'm st still feeling to think the hearts might have not been this tire of choice at this point. They might just not be good enough. Maybe later in the synth will prove me wrong. But right now it's just not on it as easily as uh, the other drives on the mediums are. As we see, still the pairs of two here. The McLaren's leading another car. Steven behind Crack and Mr. Wouter behind MCR. In the meantime, the leader of the race, Sveiros, is going to come into the pits. And I think Sveiros has a good chance still at attacking the podium at the very least. So he's uh, also seemingly doing a medium, medium soft, I think. Putting on a second set of mediums just now. So Steven having a big moment on the exit of the last corner there. So that's some DRS to catch back up, but that's uh, might be a little bit costly. So I was just going out of the pits. That's going to be around Bosnia, I think, just behind him. So a lot of time to catch up to, but he's got by far the freshest tires here now. And he's going to be able to have a pretty much clear path. Just has to get past Bosnia, which uh, as of right now wouldn't seem much of an issue. We're going to have to see. Steven at this point has been dropped by Crack and now MCR and Mr. Wouter are on the back of him. I think down towards the missile strike these two are going to catch. MCR though with a lack of ERS as well as Steven. Mr. Wouter still has a little bit. We can see if the, the back of the car the red flashing light means you're under 10%. So you see so by uh, MCR and Steven probably just down there. Yep. So we could see some moves pretty shortly. I think Steven just struggling a little bit more now on these six lap old mediums. MZR already going for it. Danny instead of turn 11, side by side, wheel to wheel. That looks like very respectful clean racing, but MCR getting that move done nicely. And he's up into P3 on track now. He's got his teammate to chase after 1.6 seconds. Seemingly he's on the pace. The lack of ERS might make it a bit more difficult than he'd imagined. Terra work now the last driver, I think, to make his first stop, and yes, that is the case. So, everyone I haven't made a one stop. Terra work putting on a set of softs. Potentially going for a medium soft soft. I could even imagine that for the Greek. So, as a fresh set, and otherwise, uh, it will be another medium set probably at the end. We're gonna have to see. See, it drops all the way back behind Axel and Serial Killer. We're a pretty entertaining race. A lot of tension still in. But it's crack leading for MCR for one two for McLaren. Currently Steven and third with a time penalty. And on all the tires, it's gonna be vulnerable to Mr. Wouter behind. And then a little bit further down we see Sway Rolls five seconds behind this train. But obviously on the freshest tires. It's just gonna be catching and catching and catching, and that's what he wants to do. But the DRS for these guys is going to make life a little bit easier. Trying to save some battery, trying to save some fuel. As uh, so we do have a retirement for Energetics, and that is a safety car. And Energetics must have crashed just coming out of turn 6 there. Spirit off to the right hand side of the wall, and that's another retirement for the Ferrari this season. Who uh, I think is still on 2 points this season, so uh, not ideal whatsoever. But I can imagine... We're going to see everyone into the pits this lap. And it's probably going to be a lot of hearts. I'd imagine most people would go in. I think it'd be very... I would say stupid, but with the length of this pit lane, even if you have to double stack, it might just be the best thing to pit. I was like, someone like Swayros, this might feel like he hasn't, but with the two stop. Yeah, it might, it might just be the case. And now we're going to see a lot of hearts in. We see it for crack. MCR then getting held up then. As uh, Steven is able to release himself. Steven onto mediums. So he's trying something else. As I see a McLaren absolutely spinning across the track. That is for the team best. <laughs> that is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen on a stream. Uh, I will urge everyone to watch that back once they get that. That was... 
I apologize because that was just very funny. Swip has uh, decided to stay out, uh, interestingly enough. But <laughs> there's someone in our climbs. I'm sure that's some sort of glitch and it didn't actually happen, but that is hilarious for my POV. <laughs> I think that was meant to be MCR's car, but I'm a bit lost on that. Uh, but as we can see, several drivers have opted for a medium set of tyre. That's going to make things interesting, because those hards are going to be better at the end, sure. But those mediums, definitely for the first 5-6 laps, are going to have a huge advantage. So, drivers like Bosnia and Kamke, I'd expect to come for the field a little bit. Maybe even towards the front, and then it's for the hard runners a key to hold somewhat of a decent position to try and maintain the tires properly, and then towards the end of the race, pounds then. Obviously, if there is not another safety car. So, we're gonna have to see how this pans out. It's kind of a 50 50 split. Obviously, Swip is the outlier in this with all hearts. Um, not having done his second stop yet. My gam won the late safety car, but they, for for that you'd have to keep track position still. So whether that's going to happen, not too sure. We're going to have to see. Crack is still in the lead, and MCR losing a couple positions, obviously due to the double stack there uh, to Mr. Walter and Steban. So he won't be too happy about that, but he's still in the fight here, definitely. And beer out the tire choice would have been the same. Then I think, you know, it would have been just a matter of time for MCR would have been down in fourth. So it might not be the worst thing ever. As uh, I think Swip has now opted for the pits, uh, deciding to put on a different set of tires. So, which uh, I don't know. It seems kind of useless to wait that one extra lap, but at the same time, he hasn't lost too much. So expect a set of mediums potentially for the Haas. Yep. He's going to be down in last place here. 15th, so everyone right now will get points, obviously. We already had one point, which will be awarded to Mr. Wouter due to his pole position. Um, but if you finish right now, you get points, which um, should be pretty encouraging to then, you know, at least try to make the checker flag. So further down, we have a few drivers with a few penalties. Billy Arnork has 13 seconds. I'd imagine he can get some of that removed. Um, Mr. Burrow, Axel, Serial Killer, all in 3 seconds as well. And obviously, Steban won't be helped by this either, considering he still has a 3 second time penalty as well. He is obviously up in P3, so if he can get track position, maybe we have gaps behind. Obviously, if other drivers pick up penalties. And there's a chance for him to still get a really good position here. But it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world. And everyone who is still clean, think of a, a flip Nams Ram. Obviously Swip now as well. I think they could benefit off these penalties just ahead. They aren't the quickest of quickest drivers either. Not any from runners down there that... Yeah, she does. And um, yeah... I'd imagine someone like Flip could jump up quite a few positions should they keep it on track. So let's see. That's going to opt. So this car is going to be in this lap, so we'll have hopefully 12 laps of green flag racing. IoT crack leading it. And obviously has going to have to wait for the safety car to come pull into the pits properly. Early the final corner opts for a nice exit to try and accelerate out of for a safety car restart. So the crack is now right, slowed it down to 60 km an hour. Slow restart here, speeding back up. Don't want to go too up and down with it. That was just about okay, I think. But it does look like he might go down out of the final corner. Which, yeah, uh, makes sense. And there he does go, but Mr. Wouter just behind is awake. And on the ERS as well, and a lost list stream. It looks like Mr. Wouter is already going to go for the move on to the lead into turn one, running outside. And with a lot more grip, 
seemingly has pulled it off quite easily. Crack getting the better exit. But it does look like Mr. White has got that done. Stevan wants to get a move done as well, but has to wait. Turn 3 is not the easiest place to make an overtake. And all they go file through, single file, down towards the end of Sector 1. Mr. Pro making a little bit of a mistake there, getting caught there. Axel getting a 3 second time penalty. But he's got the move done in one way or another. Stevan not quite catching crack here, and MCR is actually looking close to the back there. As the uh, moves are happening here and there, Cam K again through in Bosnia. And it looks like Harry Noir has got through on James Head who picks up a freezing time penalty not himself. Just dropping down a little bit f further. Stephen now on the move, the, down the inside of Crack. A bit of a shallow line, but second part of the corner. He's going to complete the move and get himself up into P2. And now the MCR is already on the back of Crack. He's got these hearts decently up to temperature. It looks like he's following his teammate quite easily at this part. He seems to just be struggling a little bit more in the hearts. Might have not got his tires right up to temperature. I could be wrong. We're going to have to see. But Mr. Wouter has put in the false lap, which is just about taken away by Kamke, who uh, seems to be on the go here, and um, wanting to make moves. So you, you can say he's, you know, been helped by the safety cars. Mr. Purple gets the second time penalty here, six seconds now he's on. But he's proven his pace right now. It looks like he's in to win it. Let's see, first he's going to have to dispose of a fair few cars. The flip has now also got a free second time penalty. So many cars down the field now on that. We're going to see Cam K up for a move on Swayros and get himself into P5. And next up is his tight arrival MCR. And I think MCR is going to be very eager now to get past Crack. He's already been dropped out of DRS from Steven and Mr. Wouter. Obviously DRS enabling next lap. I think MCR is going to look at this and go for the move. And then he is at a turn 10. He goes for it. And it looks like he can pull that one off quite decently there. Crack having to settle for fourth. Just dropping a little bit further and further back. Pace is not there like he had in the beginning phase of the race before the safety car. So he's still remaining close and still remaining up the grids, but... At least MCR has put a car between himself and uh, Cam K now. Steven's in the faster lap there. Top 2 kind of trying to get a gap here. Two McLaren's are following each other very closely here. And uh, actually all the way down to 7th this is very close. This is a very much like Paul Ricard races usually are. Drivers staying very close together when they can. And uh, yeah, all the way down to Bosnia and Harna work. This terrain is staying quite close. We have a DRS terrain, which is uh, more and more common in D3 at this point. Steven going to go for a move here for the lead. And uh, he gets that done quite easily. Obviously, his job is to just get the gap down towards P3. That's, that's his primary objective at this point. And if at some point you find yourself five seconds ahead of the rest, then you can maybe start thinking about winning. Uh, obviously if he can drop Mr. Wout he's not going to hesitate to do that but doubt it for now. Boston gets thrown on Sway Ross. In the meantime the McLarens are back fighting. Uh, I don't think MCR will be too happy with that. So Crack gets himself back up into P3. Uh, it's uh, now back under pressure from Cam K. Cam K following through this Spaniard. So we have uh, nine laps to go in racing, two thirds into this race. I'm going to see potentially an overtake here from Cam K on MCR. Both of them going to fight each other and it looks like Cam K has got through that quite easily. MCR just backing out of it. Uh, see, it's the back of Cam K there coming through turn one. And it looks like he's going to get the exit though. He's going to make a fight out of it. But it looks like Cam K has got that position for now. Hope for MCR he hasn't got any damage. So that could be very, very costly. 
items here. She's gonna have to wait till the tires from Cam K, the mediums, do drop off eventually. Which I reckon they will. But MCR doesn't want to wait and he looks to be on the back of Cam K. Potentially want to go for a move, but not right now. Cam K staying behind as well. Following through crack, but down towards turn turn, we've seen how aggressive the slipstream can be at times there. It looks like the Red Bull is trying to benefit from that as well. For this corner, if you use the ERS properly at this point, you could get alongside crack defending in the middle of the road, and it's not going to allow KMK to get through at any point. And KMK looking to get a bit of a bad exit there off the exit of turn 11. MCR trying to poke his nose in. Gonna put KMK under more pressure. It's not going to make it the easiest job in the world for Cam K to get through either. Let's see, file through the last corner once again. Seeing Zero Killer go past from Sapporo, then a P12. It's a little bit off the back of the rest of the pack. In the meantime, this is going to remain as it is, I think. I'm just waiting for the point where those tires do drop off and I think it's going to be in the next lap or two. The mediums are just going to hit a little bit of a cliff. And then it's going to be more and more difficult for the likes of Cam K, Steve and Mr. Wout to hold on to their advantages. And it might swing a little bit more into the favor of the hard runners. But they have a, a gap to bridge do they want to get up towards the top two. Mr. Wout is obviously sensing this as a chance to just save the RS behind Steban. Not use any of it. For now that seems to be a, a smart thing to do. But you could want to get past eventually should the pace drop too quickly. Let's see. Yeah, Kamke once again struggling for turn 11. MCR might need to smell a chance there. Running out at a turn 12 then, that will be a late move, gets itself alongside though. And this is going to be a fantastic move he can pull it up, but it doesn't have quite the straight line speed or the ERS to pull it through. As uh, so now Bosnia is trying to get involved, not quite able to, a little bit of contact on the exit there. ERS is going to get used by Bosnia, Bosnia has a lot more than MCR does. MCR might have been a little bit too aggressive with his usage. And then to the outside goes Bosnia, round the outside of turn 1. Not quite gets it off. Quite a rude shot there by MCR, just closing the door. Quite harshly there. So, let's just see. It looks like MCR, I don't think he's managed his DRS properly. That might come to cost him, because he is D rating already at the start of the straight. He's just going to get a drop further and further back here. Also, guys around him are just going to be able to get past. Bosnia. Trying to go down the inside. He's going to come out ahead. MCR doesn't have much to fight with then. Bosnia is up into P5. And Swayros is next up and trying to get past. And he does have quite a bit of battery. He sees the flashing lights from MCR on the back of the McLaren. And alongside he goes. A little bit of contact there, wheel to wheel, but it looks like Swayros could get this done pretty easily. And Bosnia also de at this point. So Swayros, I think, could be on for a move here once again at the end of Sector 3, then towards Turn 1, potentially. We'll have to see. It's got a bit of a gap to bridge now to Kamke and crack as well. Kamke just driving this race smarter. That's, that's the only thing I could put there. I think MCR on raw pace today has been quicker than Kamke was as uh, Swayros getting alongside Bosnia, getting past Bosnia, Bosnia not fighting that. And uh, potentially knowing that Swayros has a little bit of battery, you could try and close back up towards the guys in front. Then save a bit of your own battery. And hopefully that'll be enough to try and fight it at the end once again. Kamke just followed the right people. Been in the right spots. Even though he's not the quickest today. And I think to maximize your points every time in the championship, he's, he's just done that properly. And now he's just following IRT Crack, who uh, 
Seems to be fairly quick now. And uh, slowly that gap towards the top two is reducing, but is it going to be enough? I'm not too sure. So we still have a little bit of a fight between Swip, Mr. Pro, and Zero Killer. Zero going deep on the brakes. But making that one stick quite nicely then. So Axel and James are fighting are very close to each other here as well. Fight for P9 there, a bit isolated from the rest of the grid. As Bosnia has made a mistake there, and MCR is trying to get it down the inside. But the exit is not good enough there, and Harry Noir might want to capitalize on this as well. Even though having a penalty, you know, track position can prove vital, especially with his 10 second penalty currently. We're going to have to see how this plays out. The MCR now down in 7th. Potentially having a Ferrari very close as well, very soon. Trey Ross in the meantime is, doesn't seem to be able to catch the top four, especially P, the guys in P3 and 4 are cracking Gamke. 1.8 is the gap, but it needs to be reducing and not increasing for the Swedish driver and the Mercedes currently in P5. Maybe the only one to really do much about this. In the meantime, we still have Stepan and Mr. Wouter in P1 and 2. Obviously, Stepan just wants to go as quick as he can. Has saved up quite a bit of battery still, as well as Mr. Wouter. So, they do have something to fend the third, fourth place off, but Stepan doesn't even want them to get close enough. Because if we look at the leader gaps, yeah, the gap from Stepan to Kamke is 2.8 as of right now. And if. You know, you want to get that over three seconds. You're gonna have to make sure you do it properly. Could be a difficult to ask. We're gonna have to see. But if your cam case on those older mediums as well, might struggle to keep with the back of the McLaren here as well. Going forward, for right now he's still on the DRS, but for how long we're gonna have to see. Mr. Wouter, all he has to do is make sure Crack doesn't get in DRS either. So I think it's in, in the common collective for them to to try and just get that gap as big as they can. Steven, if he wants to win this race, he's going to have to somehow drop Mr. Wouter, which is, at this track is just so difficult to do. And he might have noticed that after driving ahead of him for a good five laps. And then deploy him off his DRS so he can't come back. So... I don't know, as of right now, it seems pretty difficult. KMK has dropped out of DRS for that straight. Does seem to have more straight line speed to catch back up the crack pretty easily. So Bosnia has given through on sway rolls. The MCR wants to get it, make it right the outside. Not quite making that work. And uh, it's going to lead Bosnia to try and close that gap but it's just not working right now the gap is only increasing to the crack and cam and it looks like a long day for mcr to try and even uh, get this one closer together even though it looks so good from earlier on in the race after that safety car it's just not been the same and she's raising it a little bit too aggressively in there i think a bit too aggressive with your s and and it's so easily done that you find yourself in the wrong position the wrong time. Let's see, we still have three laps to go. A lot of things can still happen in that time. We're gonna have to see if anything does. Steve and now on six second penalties. That can happen. Let's see how far that's gonna drop him. I don't think anything beyond fourth. But his chance of a podium look out of the window now. So Axel's picked up a 3 second time penalty, another one as well. He's now on 9 seconds, so he's going to drop behind James and flip for sure. That's a, he does do that on track. Uh, potentially for a spin there, coming through turn 6. A late bit of a bottle there for the Greek, and he's going to drop maybe even further back. So MCR is now trying to get around the outside of Bosnia. Bosnia having conceded that position to Sway Ross. Looks like these two could be fighting each other. I think Bosnia just knows. 
just have to save my ERS properly. But he might do it down towards turn level. I can see him go for a move here. He's waiting and out. That's interesting. Because with the knowledge of DRS, you might want to just be the second car on the train on the last lap. Although, he does still have two laps to do it, so maybe it's not quite as strange as I'm making it out to be. But this would be the lap he has to get past MCR, potentially. At least one of the cars here. And then overtake the second car on the last lap. To make sure you're not the second duck without DRS. Because uh, DRS from KMK they're not going to get. Or many of us neither, so... She's a bit of a tactical play to see who's doing what. Hein and Wark, at the same time, is trying to get involved in on this. Obviously, he doesn't have much lose over now. He's, he's going to lose a lot of time with the 13 seconds. Again, ways the series might think of that, God knows. Um, but he could inflict a little bit of a, of a spanner in the works here for other people. We'll have to see. MCR is uh, getting through on Swyros on lap 26. I think Swyros seems to be okay with that. Bosnia may be making a bit of a mistake. Kind of getting through there on the chicane. He's in the P7. The Greek driver might want to close back up towards the front. Seeing the top two getting very close once again. Mr. Wouter behind Stevan here. Cap to RT crack is 1.6 still from Mr. Wouter. So it's going to be pretty, pretty difficult for crack to make this work. It's going to have to happen, really. And Gamke just doing all he needs to do. He's going to rack up a podium at this rate. Even in a race where he didn't look favorable to even be in the top five. He's uh, actually pulled out the most of it, despite maybe shortcoming in his pace today. Compared to other people. And uh, right now, his pace actually does seem pretty good towards the end of the race. So... It's not that... Maybe not that surprising either. As we're on the final lap, it does look like Steven's gonna potentially do it on track. Even, uh, if he would have wanted off track as well, you gotta make sure you're not in, uh, in a jeopardy. Crack has managed to catch within the DRS there. But I don't think he has any chance to really have a go at Mr. Wout to this lap. 9 tenths is a little bit too much. And no ERS either, whereas Mr. Wouter starts about 40% to burn, should he need it. He's going to do that here just now, so the 5 for P5 might be interesting. With MCR trying to stay ahead of Sway Ross, but I think down towards turn 10 and 11, this is going to be very difficult with these two. Harry Newark and Bosnia also going to be close in the, up the back of the McLaren. I'm going to see if anyone is able to do it. But these two also DRA things is going to get them side by side, coming through turn 11. Looks like Bosnia is going to have that and uh, get the P7 on track at least. But I have to cut towards the race leaders. Because it looks like Steven and Mr. Wright are going to cross the line first a second. But Steven is going to fall further back due to his penalties. Which is going to award Mr. Wout to the win here today at the French Grand Prix in Paul Ricard. So we see Steven having another, uh, Axel having another spin there at the back. Crack is finishing in P2, Cam Cape 3-3, three, three, and it's deep on a P4. Sorry, Ross, P5 with the ERS manager just being a little bit better than his, his peers around him. MCR P6, then Bosnia P7, uh, Flip P8, James P9, Harry Noark after his uh, 13 seconds of penalties in P10. And Swip jumping up to 11, Serial 12, Masperum 13th. If I was going to get 14th, because Axel has actually crossed, hasn't crossed the line, so he's going to be classified, but... He has TNF and he's uh, only going to be left for one point here today. At this French Grand Prix. Bit of a, a normal race, I'd say. But that uh, was definitely an interesting race in terms of strategy. Obviously, it saves us through a bit of a spanner in the works for some drivers. I think it would have been interesting nonetheless, because... We did have about three, four, five drivers that were close enough uh, for a race win. But I play that this way, and uh, that is just how it is. So, Ebo has uh, 
decided to enter the pit. So we're going to see him cross the line very slowly. And uh, let's have a quick look if we can find it. Uh, the fastest lap will go to Steban, so he will pick up an extra point there, uh, getting it up to 19. So we'll cross the line just there. And uh, he's going to rack up two points there, Ibo. As we can see, Mr. Wouter picking up a win here today, and I think he'll be very happy with that one. And, uh, seemingly at the chat, he is that as well. And I think uh, everyone in the top three can be quite happy with their races. Crack, P2, maybe not the outcome he would have wanted here today, but still a very good race from him. Kamke, P3, uh, P4 is going to be Steban with a fastest lap as well. Um, Meantime, Mesuato did obviously get a point for pole position. Nosferos P5. MCR taking another blow in the championship down to P6 here. With Bosnia P7. Then it's Flip in 8th. Uh, James in P9. Heinrich P10. Then it's Swip. Serial Killer. Ultima Sapporo. Ibo. And then Axel getting classified but crashing out before the line. Uh, so he will pick up one point. And uh, then it's Energetics. The only proper DNF off here today. A uh, very exciting race, and obviously Kamke is going to extend his championship lead here with another 7 points, uh, making it now 57 with 3 races to go. That's uh, going to be a mountain to climb for anyone to really challenge him. MCR, I think, might be the only one capable of doing it. But I think that's going to be it from me here. Thank you for your stopping, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.